Hello and welcome to another episode of Minor Region Love. I, that's a terrible, terrible title, but it made sense when I did it one time. And uh, since we're doing it again, we're going to title it the same thing with a different date, right? Part two. Um, so, Monday, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, there are no Minor Region games. So I intended on trying to get this in where I'd cover um, some Minor Region content. Because these teams are the teams that are towards the top of the minor region algorithm and we I don't know anything about them you don't really know much about them um, unless you are a minor region fan or you have literally a time machine and can make time for everybody um, so it's hard to really get a vibe on what these teams offer going into worlds outside of what stats tell us so I am trying to watch a little bit of each region VCS is not listed on here LCO is in either um, LCO didn't play this past weekend and the VCS um, for more J Beast is a pretty good uh, indicator of how that's going. Um, now, from what he said, Gam looked like crap, but still won. So I don't think I'm going to get a good read on Gam from that. So that is a thing. Plus, um, I believe SBTC's mid laner had um, personal reasons they couldn't play. Somebody had passed away or something or got sick. I, I don't really recall either way. Um, they couldn't play, so they didn't have their starting five anyway. So or even at 100%, so that's uh, that's why the VCS isn't really on here. Um, but these teams all are significant. Some of them we went over last week. Um, some we've went over all split long um, as top teams, teams we expected to compete for Worlds. So I looked at their best of fives, best of threes, and whatever from this past week, and I took some notes um, on the game. So Loud and Furia. So um, this ended up being 3-0 for Loud. This comes off of Loud losing to Pain Gaming, which I went over last week. I may have that as one of the two videos at the end of this, you know, how I have it in the outro now. Um, and you can watch that for opinion on those games. But So Loud lost to Pain 3-2. And um, Faria was in the loser bracket, beat Red, Ga Red Cannons, um, and then lost to Loud uh, 3-0. So in this, what did the vibe I got? Well, Tin owns in mid alongside Croc is really starting to click. Um, game one, Tinones pulled out of Belkaz and was very dominant on it. Uh, game two was really decided in an early game Rift Herald fight where Tinones also was impactful on a Galio. And um, Tinones is a player that I've heard of before. He's been at international events. And um, I mean, how is he going to look in this one? I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, obviously, he's a world-class player relative to his region. Um, consistently being able to get to international events enough to actually know, oh, I know who that player is. Croc should have won spring or may have won spring MVP. Went to Loud from Netshoe Miners. And Loud has really turned it up late in the split and taken the, the league by storm. Um, Pain Gaming's waiting for them. Definitely one of, if not the most storied team in CB Lull. Um, game three, bot lane got fed for Loud and they just ran with it. Um, the uh, 80 carry was 4-1-1 one, and one within 12 minutes. So they just ran over Faria. And um, this is not really too much of a surprise if you think about it. Because Faria, um, you know, a lot of people told me that they, they uh, will tend to int in playoffs. Throw, throw their advantages that they gained in the um, split. And it happened, it looks like. So um, it, it'll be an interesting series nonetheless. A rematch between these two. And we'll see what happens with Pain and Loud in the CB Lull Finals. We're going to have a different team than we had at MSI. Um, hopefully um, something comes of it this weekend. DFM and Sengoku Gaming. This obviously is what we're looking forward to. And this is just, I think, an appetizer to the finals where we see these two teams duke it out again. DFM won 3-1. This comes after Sengoku Gaming had went 2-0 against DFM in best of ones the split. I went over this matchup last week, actually, looking back at a matchup from several weeks ago. Um, to just get an idea of how it looked and Sengoku Gaming had won that game that game with um, very solid macro play getting objectives getting Drakes and winning off of that now in this game one I could not find online um, I didn't look on Twitch but on YouTube looking for VODs um, the LJL site didn't act, LJL channel did not have the games from this at least easily for me to find um, I end up finding some co-streamer was streaming the games so I um Obviously, I muted it because, I mean, 
No offense, I can't speak Japanese. So I muted it and just kind of skimmed through it. Kind of what I did for all these. So keep in mind, I did not watch literally five hours of content for every series. I just skimmed for the um, key parts. Um, if I knew a Drake fight was coming or I knew something was coming and all of a sudden, oh, look at the kill difference or the gold changed. Like maybe you should look and see what what occurred. So um, Zeri things in game two, that I think was vital. Sengoku Gaming, vital. Um, Nongshim Red Force from LCK loaned him out um, and he's doing very well. I would say he's doing better than Ghost. So game three though, because DFM's a team we're focusing on even more so than Sengoku Gaming, even though, though both could go i mean when we get to this it's gonna be that case of it could still happen you know it doesn't matter who wins the first time it matters who wins in finals um so game three steel took over uh 4 and one on a wukong i believe at 16 minutes steel being a player that we've been i mean i watched at msi and considered one of the best if not the best minor region jungler at the event um very good player DFM plays a slow style of game. In game four, that came through very slow. Um, you know, um, what I have here? Oh, game three, Utapon had a key double kill to secure a Drake fight, which then they would figure out how to end off of, off of that. I don't know what TFing means. What did I write that down for? Neither one had a twisted fate. I don't remember what they... I watched literally like 20 games today, so... Um, game 4, though. So, Game 4 is very slow. DFM played a very slow, methodical game. And it was just clean League of Legends. Uh, Steel carried in the early game. Making a couple things happen. Getting their laners ahead. And it was just a dominant win. Um, definitely something that we would come to expect out of DFM. All split long. And maybe they finally figured out a way to play Sengoku Gaming in the way they had played everybody else. Um, DFM obviously is a world elite team. We've been waiting for this for a long time. So um, for them to win 3-1 isn't all that much of a surprise. Um, I figured Sengoku Gaming would put up a little more of a fight though in Game 4. Given how they had done in Best of Ones. Isaris and Astrala. Um, is Astral, not Astralis. Astral, however... Game five. So this was a real interesting one. Okay. Five games. This comes after Astral had beaten Isaris three to one. I think I went over that last week. Dropped Isaris into the loser bracket. Isaris wins against maybe Rainbow Seven and then goes to finals and beats Astral three to two in a very, very chaotic end. Honest to God, worth watching. It's one of those ends that Latin American fans are going to remember for a long time, I feel like. So. Um, game one, Saya carried. If you missed my video earlier today, I went over Isaris as my first team in my Worlds 2022 preview. We know they're going to Worlds. We know they're a play-in team. Um, Gen G and T1 are the other two teams that I know I'm going to probably do in the coming days. Maybe Top and JDG as well because we know where they're going to be. Um, they're going to be in um, the main event. So those these five teams, we know where they are, right? We know where their seeding is, relatively speaking. Um so, if you want to know more about Isaris, I go over that there. So, Saya carries, which makes sense, given the stats. Saya was definitely their carry throughout playoffs. Um, and also is their most experienced player, the only player on their team with international experience. Uh, game 2 was tight. Astral would take the Rift Herald, the second Rift Herald, and then just pull away in the late game. Um, Astral just played a very clean game, very close. And then, when push came to shove in the late game, Astral came out ahead. Game three, um, what I have here, bot say, oh, sorry. So, Isaris went bot side often in the early game to get ahead, and then Grell would take over after that, and Grell kind of 1v9, racking up some kills. Game four, Isaris would struggle. So, this is the thing that I think we're going to find with this team, and I go over it in my video as well. It, at ADD is an LCK import and he is not good. He is not that good. I don't think stat wise, you may have a different vibe on it because you may have watched Latin America play. You may have watched this kid, guy play. Um, I'll split long and have a better idea, but his numbers do not look good from the playoffs. I went over this earlier. Um, and in game four, he got completely dumpstered and like, it's not against like another import. It's against a native, um, Latin American um, t top laner in Achi. 
So the fact of the matter is, like, you've got to pick it up. You're an import. You can't be losing to, like, um, domestic players. Um, so he struggled, which I think is going to be Isaris' problem internationally. Um, game five, a very close game. Extremely close all the way to the end. And um, what ended up happening at 44 minutes was Isaris had an open nexus and was able to defend. Um, they were able to defend the... Jelly, the support on an Alistar, would get a double kill to prevent the end by himself, 1v2. Then came the AD carry, who was a Gravato, getting a double kill. At the same time, Shadow for Estrella would get a double kill and then die. And um, ADD would then TP to the Astral neck uh, base and then win. Um, they it would take a minute or two, but they would end the game. Um, very, very intense, intense game. One of those endings, like I said, that I feel like LLA fans will remember for a long time and it'll be played um, in uh, highlight packages for a while. So, very intense. PSG and J team, a very weird three-game series. I have not seen a weirder scoreline. Um, algorithmically, uh, my algorithm would have been is, is completely destroyed by this. Good thing I watched it. Um, the PCS is a mess. It is a real mess. Meander has now joined us in Discord over the last week or week and a half here. And it's really good because Meander is like our PCS, like JBeast is our VCS um, insider. Uh, Meander is a good insight for the PCS. And um, PCS is a disaster. So PSG and J-Team, these two teams should not be playing each other in the bracket. These are two teams we expected going to Worlds. And then not only that, this was a mess. PSG win 3-0. Game 1, very clean. They pull ahead. Hanabi gets a top gap. And they end. They win through that. Very easy. Gori has a extended quadra kill for a Drake in the mid to late game. And PSG runs away with it. Right, game 1. Game 2 was crazy to end. So, J-Team get out to an early lead. Put PSG in a hole. PSG cannot play this way internationally if they want any chance in hell at winning in groups or if they go into play-ins if they play like this they're not getting out they will not get out there's i mean i understand it's harder now with the extra lec team and things like that but they will not get out even if it was against the vcs um chief esports honest to god chief might be the best out of except saigon buffalo i honestly do think chief is probably the second best minor region team right now like just outright um because psg so, J-Team get up 3K gold. PSG end up digging themselves a big hole. We're talking over 5, 6K. But the game drags out to 47 minutes, so gold doesn't really matter. But the kill score at the time was like 14 to 3 in J-Team's favor. PSG take the Baron. They get a kill in mid on top lane. And then push down top. I mean, push down mid and end. As like a player is trying to end the backs in, in top lane. So, like the kill score is like 6 to 14. PSG win. I don't even know what the gold really was looking like or, or objectives or things like that outside. PSG took the Baron and at 47 minutes got one kill and ended off of it. Um, just a crazy end. And then in game three, not much different. A very close game through the first 20 minutes. J-Team with a lead. Um, they would then pull away even more. J-Team are up in kills. But um, at 40 minutes, what would happen is... Um, yeah, J-Team were up 18-9 to nine in kills. And what would happen is the game got to 40 minutes again. J-Team could not end. PSG, Zeri, Unified was able to go off on Zeri and they won because of it. Um, really, this is not, this is a mess. An absolute mess. Um, it, it just, it, it kind of stinks because like, I'm hard on the Western regions and I understand these outside of, um, while well, these two here are Western regions. I don't know if Turkey... Does Turkey fall in the Western or East? Because they're in the middle. I guess West, right? Because they aren't as competitive as like the Eastern regions. Um, but um, the thing is, like, I'm really harsh. Excuse me. Of the West. But these minor region teams are not making a case for themselves either. Saigon Buffalo did in their first series. They played clean. Game 3 was kind of chaotic, but they 3 0 their opponent, right? And now they're against Gam. And uh, we'll see how they do in that one. But 
outside of them, I really, in G2, those two teams, outside, I mean, EG lost yesterday, right? So this is just not looking good for minor regions. This is going to be an LCK, LPL, um, just scrim session for a month, and then they'll finally play League of Legends against each other and determine the champion. Finally, Nasser, Turkey, and Fenerbahce, FB, FB, we'll go with that. So, uh, this whole, I, I mean, Nasser, Turkey fell, right? Now, the thing is with this, the individual, I think their main settings in the comments, um, they acknowledged that Nasser, Turkey fell on their face in the playoffs because the meta didn't fit them. Their bot lane was on Struggle Street, right? Now, I look at this and I actually, I thought about it. You know, when I look back at my uh, minor region wrap up I did last week, right? On Monday or the week before. Um, Bao, FB's bot laner, was a top five bot laner in all the minor regions. His stats were very good at a high level. And that makes sense, right? That in the playoffs then he would take over and he did. So, um, game one. Nasser took the lead in bot lane and would, would run away with it, which kind of made me think, oh, well, really, this is how close this was. And I think this is why people are telling me Istanbul Wildcats are going to come out of Turkey again because um, this was really close and it shouldn't have been. Game two was the opposite. Um, Bao was 4-0-3 in the early game, getting out to a very early lead and then carrying from there. Game three at 22 minutes, um, they would go ahead. Uh, FB would go ahead on Azari once again, Bao carrying the game, getting them ahead and winning. Uh, game four, Balulu tried his ass off for Nasser Esports Turkey and would win. Balulu also pulled out the classic Velkaz, which seems like a Balulu pick. Um, in the times I've watched him this split, and like I've only watched like two or three series of Nasser Turkey, um, or games for that matter outside of this series, Balulu playing Velkaz seems like a thing, right? And you look back and, oh, well, it is. Um, he tried, and he ended up doing it. Maybe it wasn't on Velkaz in Game 4, though. I think it was on Zoe. Either way, he did very well. And I said in my preseason, actually, for the TCL, that Balulu was a 1v9 player for this team if they wanted to succeed. Um, game 5, Knock Knock in top lane for FB would actually play in Aurelia, and they would go top lane quite a bit, which is a weird, weird strategy to put the top lane in the position to succeed, especially in a meta where bot lane is king. And he won B9 after getting ahead. Um, so just a clean all-around series actually from this team. Now when they get to Istanbul Wildcats, I think they are going to have some troubles. Um, you know, but when I think of Istanbul Wildcats, they have some issues. Saren looked good at times, I guess, but I don't know. This meta should fit Holy Phoenix, but Holy Phoenix also has a limited champion pool. I don't know if he's playing Zeri really or if he's playing um, his classics. The only time I saw him play was playing Samira against Nasser, and um, he lost. So they have to do better than that. Um, I wonder, actually, I think this team beat Nasser in the final week of the regular split, now that I think about it. Um, so Nasser struggled against this team even in the regular season. Um, so that's something to think about. Maybe FBR better than Nasser right now. But that's it for my Minor Region Love Part 2 epi episode. That is it for my second episode of Minor Region Love. Thank you for watching. If you like it, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Check out my Isaris video that came out earlier today as part of my Worlds 2022 preview. Uh, eventually, I'll have a playlist and we'll go with the flow when it comes to that. Um, where you can watch all of them. But thank you for watching and hope you come back for more.